Uh, good evening. My name is Sri Hari Pandit, President and CEO of Stealth Communications. Uh, we're proud to support, you know, um, Internet Society of New York and LibTech uh, this evening. Um, Stealth is an internet service provider that was started back in 1995 by my wife and I. And um, so what I'll tell you is just a little background of the company and how we got here and kind of what we're doing now here in Manhattan. So one of the biggest challenges operating as an ISP here in the city is there's very limited choices in terms of the carriers that where we can buy dark fiber from. Um, you know, actually, in the New York City market, it was originally just a couple providers. They expanded during the dot-com boom, and then obviously during the dot-com collapse, you know, a lot of consolidation has happened since. And so for our business, in order for customers to interface into our backbone, uh, we need to provision the last mile circuits, you know, from carrier hotels here in Manhattan to commercial buildings, you know, throughout the city. And so procuring dark fiber or lit circuits uh, is very expensive. And dark fiber is sometimes available or it is, you know, it's available or not available based on time and day. And, uh, you know, obviously they don't want to sell that capacity to competitors like us. So the reason why dark fiber is so important for a business like us is we can run dark fiber into a commercial building and then turn up any amount of capacity we want in the building and control the capacity and economics. And so because the lack of that, um, we spent, you know, the last number of years um, working on obtaining a franchise with the city of New York, basically a public right-of-way agreement. And in February 2013, um, we received that right-of-way agreement. And this actually allows us to, um, you know, build our own fiber optic network. Today, uh, we started construction in June of last year, and a couple of weeks ago, we actually finished our first uh, mainline network, which runs from Columbia a circle all the way straight down to the southern tip of Manhattan. Um, the little bubble over there, that's 325 Hudson Street, a brand new carrier hotel um, that's actually operated by Hunter over here, and he'll talk more about that. So we currently have two 864s built into three, uh, 325 Hudson Street, and um, we're homing all, you know, all the commercial buildings now you know, into that carrier hotel to provide buildings either dark fiber back to the carrier hotel or providing them um, internet connectivity. So, um, yeah, just again, some pictures uh, of where the fiber runs. Um, okay, so in Manhattan, the, the way service providers like Stealth, Verizon, and Time Warner run cables is there's a system called the uh, Empire City Subway System. It's an entity created back in 1891, and they're the ones who are responsible for maintaining these underground ducts. And so we actually pull cables out through these white PVC ducts. Some of them are made of other materials, you know, again, it's based on um, when they were actually installed. Um, again, here's some photos of our construction crew. We actually have, as employees, our own construction crews. They actually rod, rope, and pull fiber, splice, and bring the cables into the buildings. So over here, we have a rodder, and uh, that shoots out a 2,000-foot steel rod into the duct. And, you know, we use it to clean mud if the ducts are empty, or, you know, we push it, you know, again, use a rod to pull uh, fiber um, through it. So you can see over here, they're pulling the fiber. That's a real carrier over here that holds the fiber optic cables. You know, some more pictures of them pulling cable. And here's an actual, this is how, it's pretty physical intense. So basically the guys, they have to pull cable manhole to manhole. And so just imagine how intense that is, you know, going from 60th Street all the way down to the tip of Manhattan. And so it's a pretty manual process. The systems in Manhattan are really rough. Um, again, since it's such a very old system, it's, it's um, there's a lot of blockages. So a, ru a straight run may not be possible. Sometimes we have to zigzag around. So like when we had to do the route to um, Columbus Circle, actually I'll show you over here. So yeah, if you look at this Columbus Circle route, we were supposed to go up 6th Avenue and then go west. But because we couldn't, we had to go down to 41st Street, you know, make this zigzag all the way up there, which was insane. That added over seven, 8,000 feet of extra cable. So it's uh, kind of messy over here in the city on the ground. But, um, yeah, this is 325 Hudson Street where they're doing the splicing. This is them pulling the cable into the building. <laughs> I don't know if you saw this, Hunter. <laughs> so yeah, so this is uh, yeah the, our first A6 where they got pulled in a couple of weeks ago. Oh, actually, maybe two months ago. I don't know, but yeah. Uh, so once the fiber's been pulled in, we use a, a fiber optic splicing, um, yeah, a mass fusion splicer that splices all the fibers together. We use an OTDR to make sure all the fiber is clean, you know, and we have continuity through the whole path. And um, we service a wide range of customers, you know, a lot of um, large companies to, um, you know, service providers to small, mid-sized businesses here in the city. Um, so as it relates to, like, net neutrality and so forth, you know, this is a really important topic. Um, and and f uh, so the, I guess there's two sides. On the residential side, it's really key because when you only have limited choices, one or two providers, um, 
net neutral is really key, is really important because um, that's a life, uh, you know, the lifeline, so to speak, to get information. Um, and, but on the other hand, uh, over-regulating it, as some people have may suggest, um, such as uh, making internet access subject to Title II regulation, that hurts service providers like us because we're a small business also. But Title II means uh, there's a lot more obligations that are now imposed on us. You know, basically, we're now going to have regulation compared to traditional legacy telecom services. So that results into higher taxation uh, and other obligations like CLIA and so forth. I mean, we do have CLIA compliant, uh, CLIA um, uh, requirements, but may not be as stringent as Title II requirements. Um, so you may have to be weighed and gathered. But the other thing I'd like to think about is. Um, so let's say net, net neutrality may be hard to enforce because it's, it may not be may not be reclassifiable, reclassifiable to Title II. Another way is governments, from the city to the federal government, they can make a lot of efforts into. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, I didn't realize that. Sorry about that. Oh my God, this whole time. Okay. So yeah, no. What I was saying is um, another solution to uh, making internet access subject to Title II regulation is. Uh, cities, states, and the federal government could make more conduits available cost-effectively and have them pre-installed so service providers like us can actually install fiber you know, underground a lot more easier, just like in Manhattan. Manhattan and the Bronx actually has this Empire City subway conduit system. So if they can do that on a nationwide scale and make it easy, then there could be a lot more service providers competing you know, with the large companies. So if the larger companies uh, want to have a fast lane, a slow lane, that creates a lot more opportunities for companies like us to get into those marketplaces and provide more choice and more open access, you know, to that. But anyway, those are my my two cents and uh, my presentation. And I think uh, Hunter is next. We got to do Q and A. Oh, yes, Q and A. Yes, I'll be happy to take. Yes. Okay, so Empire City Subway, I hear, is good. In other words, it pays your money, and they allow you to pull the cable through whatever cross section you pay for. So how come that for most homes, there seem to be only a few, quote, ISP, Time Warner Cable, mm -hmm. Verizon? Well, I, I think, uh, blockages. Why oh, are yeah, I, well, companies? well, I think there's a high cost of entry here in the New York City market. Cost, so uh, there's a couple parts. So for us, um, well, now it's a lot easier, but the city of New York didn't have this information franchise. It's a new type of framework on how this right away agreement, they didn't have it until most recently. So we're one of the first companies to actually. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. So New York City now has this information franchise, which you know just came about last year. So we're the first franchisee in New York City to have this information franchise, which is to provide internet access. And then separately, we also got a telecommunications franchise. What does that do? What's the franchise? Uh, the franchise is basically the authority to allow you to use the city public right of way to lay fiber cables below. Below, you know, underground or above ground. But I thought Empire City Subway simply controlled all the content. They do, but you can't enter the Empire City Subway system or the content system without having the franchise with the city of New York. So, to so first you have to apply to get the franchise. Right. Then you pay the city a fee, you know, per year plus the per foot fees. And it was hard to get such a franchise before recently. Uh, that's well, yes, that's because it was transitioning the franchise framework. If the legal document. I so I, I had heard from people who were in business, and I never had a discussion. So it, it was easy. You paid your money, mm -hmm. and perhaps there's some paperwork, as there is almost everything nowadays. Mm -hmm. And then the prices were reasonable, and the Empire uh, Subway would not block you from pulling the uh, fiber. Right. You're well, telling me mm -hmm. that actually my impression is wrong, that there were blockages. Uh, well, I mean, they're not intentional blockages. It's just that the city needs the appropriate framework in order to give authority for someone to have the right of way um, done. But the real blockages, or the biggest problems that we face here in New York City, now that we have the franchise and we have our own employees in the trucks, uh, the real issue is there's very limited space on the ground in Manhattan. Over 70% of the ducks in Manhattan are collapsed or blocked. We, there's, like, uh, like I can tell you, we were in some sections on certain avenues and streets. We're the last cable that can fit through, and um, you know I've spoken to the city and I've spoken to ECS about this. And the truth of the matter is, everyone's aware of the issue, uh, but there's no more physical space in the streets to put new conduits in. It's very, it's completely packed, and the ducks are so shallow now. They're like literally one foot below the street, which is insane in some areas. Um, the manholes are overcrowded when you try to get into a manhole. You have all this um, 
fiber cables, you know, all over the manhole, splice cases, you can't even get into the manhole. So from a physical perspective, um, you know, very little duct room plus very little room in the manholes. And so that means there's no real way for new providers to come into the city and this is a real problem. So we made the city aware of this problem. What the solutions are, I'm, I'm really not sure. Um, there's probably a lot of dead cable in the ground, but the question is who's going to go through an inventory and remove it? You know, um, it's a lot of work, probably a lot of liability associated with that. Uh, but those are the major issues that we see right now. So for us, um, you know, I think we're fortunate to get in right now. There's, there's some space available, but I don't know for how long the space will remain. Thank you. Sure. Not to ask uh, to inside baseball a telecom question, but the, this, this change in regime, has it changed the CLEC ISP distinction legally at all, or do you still also need to be a CLEC? Um, Stealth is not a CLEC, so we're an ISP, so we operate as an information service provider um, today. So we don't really provide any telecommunication services. So our two main services are internet connectivity for businesses, and second, we provide dark fiber. You know, you would need CLEC status if you wanted to have other ISPs sell you and sell your service? No, no. I think we would need to see like we needed to attach to Verizon, for example, to provide voice over IP services. Um, and even providing transport services, like let's say point to point Ethernet service, we're not subject, we don't require CLEC -like licensing for that. But I think we do have an obligation at that point then to register with the state PSC because now we're providing a telecommunication service. Okay. Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. Have you uh, published a lessons learned or a model document that can be used in other cities? Um, I have not, but I, when I met with uh, different foreign delegates, you know, from other countries, uh, when they were asking us for about our experience about running fiber and what they could do in their local countries, my suggestion was um, that the condu a conduit system, just like here in Manhattan, needs to be constructed, but it needs to be owned and operated by the city. Because really, the underground conduit systems, in my personal belief, should be owned by the city and operated by the city. It's just like the public roadway. You don't have a private entity, you know, um, handling the roads. You know, so I think, again, if the conduits were owned and operated by, let's say, DOT here in the city, you know, it's part of the standard roadway, and they would probably do a lot better job um, in terms of keeping up with the maintenance uh, of it and adding additional capacities as they see fit. Um, remember, Empire City Subway is owned by Verizon. I'm not saying that Verizon is not funding them appropriately, but still, it's very expensive for any one entity to maintain this massive underground condo system. So um, I think it needs to be reconsidered, you know, whether or not this is the appropriate model or not going forward. But anyway, going back to the delegates, when, I, when I've been speaking to the foreign delegates, so I tell them, again, you know, construct a condo system, have, the, have a city owned and operated, make it very cost effective, and build ducts into all the buildings. So you have one owner operator of underground conduits, and so provide, they can have as many providers coming into the system, and all they have to do is pull their fiber through all the ducts. And now, voila, you will have dozens and dozens of providers easily getting into business. No one has to do any trenching. New York City is tough. Like, we can pull fiber in and out of ECS, but when we need to get into buildings, we have to trench the last 20 to 50 feet. That's thirty to $80,000. You know, it's a very expensive. Yeah, question from back. Are, are the uh, steam tunnels available uh, as a future uh, solution? Um, I'm not sure about that. I haven't asked them that, but I know the city's told me that uh, that um, that you know there are a lot of options on the table. So we would just have to go to the authorities who own that or have that right away. But um, I know right now the two main right away, actually three the three main right away is the MTA tunnels. They have uh, you know right away uh, pathways for fiber. You have the always the Empire City subway system, and then we also have the Con Ed system. Here in Manhattan, and then uh, and we can also construct our own system if we wanted to. But again, you know, it's a very expensive proposition. You're going to spend probably upwards of four hundred dollars of you know creating your own mainline duct system. As part of your franchise agreement with the city, do you have to turn over a certain percentage of uh, of dark fiber. Yes. Uh, so on top of the fees, mm -hmm. we have to provide um, I think ten percent of our capacity up to eight fiber strands. Mm -hmm. That's public knowledge. Mm -hmm. I could find out that for you. But it's something like that along the lines. Right. To the city of New York. Do it. He goes to do it. Um, I mean, they're the ones who would make the request if they needed the capacity reserve for the city. Okay. Okay. So I think we're good. So, oh, yeah. No more. Okay. Oh, okay. We're good? All right. Thank you.